I remember that night so very well Though the swirling snows of time that ebb and swell And draw a veil over so much more Blanketing the heretofore Or teasing with a glimpse of pages From the book that spans the seven ages curtains part and I can see the hall where old Miss Pelly Dooley taught the kids of the village band in that ancient dark and mystic land beneath the glowering Mount Pentor that guards the gate to Kurnow Moor. I see the boy look through the glass to glimpse that happy laughing class Yet, whilst it held him in his thrall and glued him to that wooden wall, a dark, compulsive voice of dread swirled around inside his head, a nagging, numbing voice of fear that whispered low, Don't go too near. I could be a part of it all To join in the fun inside the hall To join in the laughter and have such a ball To join in and be a part of it all To join in and... <gasps> when sometimes I'm scared And frozen with dread Comforting voice swirls around in my head and urges me on to be part of it all, a part of it all, a part of it. A part of it all is where I could be, a mountain to something the whole world could see. I join in the laughter. slowly wandered off to see what caused the darkened holly tree to whisper in the frozen air as if some spirit crouched in there. It was a joy to see the face of old Miss Pelly Dooley. As she looked for what the noise could be, he dived into that sanctuary. And who might you be, young man? The boy was filled with fear and shame as he stood and faced the band. Unfriendly faces stared right back. Then a boy stuck up his hand. He's called Dopey Jory And he's just a little geek He's really quite simple He can barely even speak He can't join a class that's even slightly formal He's not very smart or sane And he's not normal and he's not one of us, that wuss is sad and mad. He's a clown, don't frown, cause he really is that bad. He's called Dopey Jory, and he really is a creep. And nobody likes him, he's a smelly belly dweep. 
It's plain he's insane and that's not just me talking We know little Joe is mad and good at stalking Make him quit every bit of our fantastic haul Pretty soon this goon's gonna drive us up the wall We'll all be dejected If you let him join the band He should be ejected And rejected out of hand He's mad cause his dad ain't got no flipping money In fact he got sacked The lazy crazy dummy Even now with a plow He tries to work the land Needing dough Poor Joe couldn't pay To join our band <laughs> Here you go, Jory. You can borrow my flute if you like. The sight of the girl made the boy's heart flutter. When he tried to say thanks, it came out in a stutter. His cold cheeks were burning as he reached out his hand and felt the chill glare from the rest of the band. Every boy there had envious eyes. The girl was, to them, an unreachable prize. Yet the boy they'd rejected and come to despise was Morwenna Rosdew's best of allies. As all of the children stood silent and grim, the new friends had wandered away. They sat in the corner, where the climate was warmer, and she started to teach him to play. So the boy, at last, had a flute in his hand and was there with the girl of his dreams. But, as he would see, for a flute wannabe, life's not as routine as it seems. Take a look and see how pathetic they can be And how the dummies grovel to each other Praising Spike the nauseating pig When hidden in a mob They bow and scrape and bob And make his head so very, very big ba ba boom ba boom ba boom ba go the drummers
goodness gracious me! Look outside and see! Such an awful sight! Out there, in the night! Perhaps it's time to pack up and be going. It seems that Jory's had a little scare. Dopey. The moon will give you light as you step into the night. It's icy mind, so please take special care. Arr. As the old lady started to bustle and shout, the rehearsal was brought to a close. The children all put on their scarves, hats and coats with fur boots to warm up their toes. Close. Yeah! Did you hear Spike scream when I kicked him? A friend in need requires understanding. A friend indeed will never be demanding. A friend like you. Love me for a lifetime. A friend like me will love you all my days. You know I'll be there wherever you stand. I know that you care when you hold out your hand. And when we are one, there's no need to hide. To stand or to Forever friends, though others may deride us. Forever friends, no hatred can divide us. Forever friends, a love so deep inside us. Forever friends, for all eternity. Mulwena, Mulwena, is that you? Shh. Yes, ma'am, I'm coming. Well, hurry up, it's freezing out there. Gotta go. Watch out for the grolics. Next day, the boy got up from his bed with a vision of monsters filling his head. Watch out for the grolics, Mulwena had said, and those words still echoed and filled him with dread. It was almost midday when he reached Trinia Fall to work with his father repairing the wall. The pair worked in silence as the morning wore on and the frost nipped the ears of both father and son. The light fought the snow in a tumbling sky as the pair worked together and the hours went by. Then just as the midday church bell tolled, father blew in his hands which were blue with the cold. His father told him just how sad he felt about the flute because the crops had been so bad the farm was destitute and though he didn't understand all his father uttered he averted his eyes and tried to look wise by pretending not to be gutted. Then father went on to explain to his son how the summer of endless rain had flooded the fields and destroyed all the yields of wheat and precious grain. Now the boy understood as he stared at the wood, that they couldn't afford the rent, though it hurt him to say it. They just couldn't pay it, let alone buy an instrument. The chocolate's heat went right down to his feet, and he started to feel so much better. Though the air was like ice, it was really quite nice to snuggle down into his sweater. With his hat on his head, he was warm when Dad said that he knew a traditional story 
of a flute in the wood where the old farmhouse stood, which now he related to Jory. I can still recall so many years ago the world seemed incandescent with a warm enchanted glow. I would watch the midnight sky to glimpse the morning star, a jewel from afar. I'd stare up into space and feel its dark embrace, surrounded by the trees, the ever watchful trees. And dreaming in its shade, one night I heard the willow tree perform her weeping tune, a flute beneath the moon. Such enchanting music set my aching heart alight Throughout that starry night An all-embracing sound Emotion so profound Emerging from the ground And drifting all around Beguiled by nature's prayer I listened as her symphony Embraced the evening air a sound beyond compare Now when life's experience Has dulled my childish joy That wild, unfettered joy I often wonder why That night beneath the sky I heard the forest cry And nature's lullaby But now I understand That something was commanding me to sing its song to you. A rumor spread, the forest was alive, a magic glade, a prehistoric tribe. The rumor told of pixies and of sprites, deep in the woods and hidden out of sight. With rumors of a magic flute, and of a tree with golden roots. The rumors say that if one day somebody finds the golden tree, then they will know, for it will show that girl or boy reality. It will bestow a gift so rare, a priceless skill beyond compare, to play the flute like no one else could ever do. A barren moor, far to the east, a spooky cave, a sleeping beast, and when it wakes, the forest shakes, the mountain sways, the valley quakes, and wicked souls are all released to join a wild, unearthly feast. And rumors say that beauty fades and music dies. Through the night, he remembered his father's dark tale, and he heard in his dreams the forest flute wail. So he welcomed the dawn and the cockerel's shrill call as he ran down the stairs and out of the hall. People who know about science 
visit the past So if I could fire a rocket Or something that travels with ease I could take space and time to unlock it To go back whenever I please Set up its place of release Then I'll have all the things in my pocket To break through a time warp with ease So the boy ate his breakfast and thought it all through He imagined a spaceship and a time machine too As he thought more and more of what Mother had said An exciting idea came into his head. Bye, Mum! His idea was really quite good. A catapult made from a branch in the wood. He took the tin can out of his pocket, all shiny and smooth and shaped like a rocket. The can was now ready for its breakthrough flight and the boy pulled the branch with all his might. He tugged and he tugged until it was right then fired the rocket at the speed of light. mean trouble to me whenever I spot them I just wanna swat them like flies buzzing over my tea someone was trying to kill me by aiming a can at the head I know who I'm blaming for doing the maiming a bogeyman wanted me dead I don't know why you call me a grockle They're not in my family tree But far more compelling is all of your yelling You seem homicidal to me A 
Knuckles a nosy outsider. They've never been welcome, you know. They're sneaky, sneaky, and so is me duty to fight anywhere that they go. And now that I've caught me a grockle, what wanted to murder me dead? It's not me who's crying or doing the dying and taking you prisoner instead. If I get me way, you'll be shackled and manacled tight like a troll. You've earned what you're getting for all your blood letting. Now get yourself inside that hole. Spinning, sliding, screaming down through the gaping jaw into a hidden underworld beneath the forest floor. The boy plunged ever downwards, far, far beneath the ground, through the burnished tunnel where the forest roots unwound. Then, all at once, he spotted a glimmer, shining bright like the shimmering of a moonbeam on an icy winter's night. And slowly it expanded to a warm and glowing light as the sacred hall of the Shifty tribe burst into his sight. So the grumpy man explained to all the grim and awful story of the wicked boy and his evil ploy to steal the forest's glory. And all the while, the boy was still as he was so accused. Feeling glum, he rubbed his bum, which was sore and badly bruised. Finally, the big man spoke as he sadly shook his head. The people gathered to hear his words, and this is what he said. My name is Kadok, and as you can see, my people expect inspiration from me. We are the Shifties of the North Cornwall crew, and we don't take kindly to humans like you. So before I get round to my final address, let's see if you're able to clear up this mess. And as the boy listened to the words Kadok said, he heard his dad's song rattling round in his head. So these were the people that dad had described, the ancient and mystical flute-playing tribe. He told them the tale of the magical flute, of how Grub had prodded him into the chute, and how he'd located the magical tree that gave him the flute as a gift, willingly. Whatever you do. This is Spooner. He gets his words mixed up. Throw another fog on the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so having considered what Grub had to say, he decided a trial must be held on that day. He shouted out loud to those gathered there. Who will defend him? Would anyone dare? I would. Throw her out. We don't let humans speak in our court. But more weather, my dear Grub, is the shifter. Let her speak. Given free by the tree at the riverside To a boy we all saw as unqualified I declare, jury, there isn't bad or wrong Cause the tree said he is the chosen one Just look and you're witnessing a wondrous sight The flute substitute is now a gold delight The tree's ancient promise is granted, you see To a fortunate boy in our company So come on, sing a song, laugh aloud with joy
Yes. <laughs> bean juice. It's bean juice. He tried to kill me. Beans, beans, beans. I'm crying about 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 beans. Roam around the forest and things aren't what they seem. You hear a twang, a jittering bang, and you wonder what it means. The trees are dark and spooky, your mind is full of dread. You try to duck your bumps down, but they hit you in the head. Ow! Beans, beans, beans. They're on to us. Beans, beans, beans. It's monstrous. Beans, beans, beans. They're frightening. Beans, beans, beans. They're frightening. Is his story truthful, or just some lie, a yarn? An old tin can, a grumpy old man, and a young kid from a farm. And now he thinks he's bleeding, he shows us all the ooze. But it's not blood he's dribbling, it's plain tomato juice! Ha 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 you don't know who you're bumping into, and it could be friend or foe. You need to learn a lesson to keep yourself from harm. Take my advice, dear Grublin. Don't you go near Jory's farm. Don't you go near Jory's. Come on now, Grublin, get a grip. My little Grublin, take a tip. I say to you, in fellowship, don't go down to Jory's farm. Oh, that's good, that is. It's my fault now. Go on, have a good laugh. It's me what's been had. Poor old Grub, he's been had. He's been had. <laughs> he's a has been. <laughs> the flute will teach you to play. But what about the Grolex? If Jory has the flute, he'll be in real danger. What's the Grolex? He's almost a Halloween monster. But doesn't like tricking or treats. Instead, he's quite nifty at scaring a shifty when they and their destinies meet. The name of our foe is the Grolex. He's big and amazingly strong. He's slimy and spotty, incredibly grotty, and stinks with a terrible palm. You better watch out for the Grolix when music and song fills the air. He'll grab ya and beat ya and probably eat ya. So please. Karaoke with care.